it's not natural to bury your child, right? A parent is supposed to go before a child. What happened to the good old days when kids were only supposed to be soft and cuddly? Well, something very different seems to have happened with these five kids who were sentenced to life in prison. Number five, Eric Smith. Eric Smith spent 28 years behind bars for the 1993 taking of a four-year-old boy's life. He is now out of prison. Is he a changed man? The parents of the murdered child spoke with 48 Hours and CBS News chief investigative and senior national correspondent Jim Axelrod in one of their first extensive interview since Smith was released in Eric Smith Gambling on a Keeler. August 2, 1993 marked a horrific day for small town Savona, New York, when local teenager Eric Smith took the life of a four-year-old boy, Derek Roby, who lived across town. Early that morning, Smith, 13, had spotted the child walking alone to a summer camp at the park. It's the first time I ever let Derek go anywhere alone, Derek's grieving mother, Doreen Roby, told 48 Hours and it was one block down, same side of the street. He gave me a kiss, and I said, I love you. He says, I love you, Mom, and he went hopping off the sidewalk. Smith lured the child into a wooded area, promising to show him a shortcut. When they were alone, he strangled Derek and hit him to his end with rocks. Roby reported her son missing after being told he never arrived at the park. Hours later, searchers found Derek's body just yards away from the park in the woods. With the criminal at large, Savona residents feared for their own children. They couldn't imagine anyone wanting to take the life of the popular little t-ball player they called the unofficial mayor of Savona, the happy kid who would sit at the corner greeting people. They assumed the culprit was a stranger from out of town. In the days that followed, a family friend of the Smiths grew concerned about Eric's behavior. Marlene Heskel told 48 Hours that on the night of the crime, Eric asked me what would happen if it turned out to be a kid. I said, I think they seriously need some psychiatric help. And he, oh, okay, you know, and he walked away. She remembered that Eric had gone to the same park near the crime scene. And that's when it all kind of come together for me that, okay, he might really know something or have seen something. Haskell called Smith's mother and they took Eric to the police command post to meet with investigators. Investigator John Hibsch said Eric seemed to enjoy speaking about the crime. Totally enjoyed it, didn't want it to end. Eric denied seeing the little boy at first, but later confessed to the crime. His grandfather was there and recalled Eric saying, I'm sorry, mom, I'm sorry, I took the life of that little boy. In August 1994, Smith, now 14, was tried as an adult and sentenced to nine years to life in prison. Smith was held in a juvenile detention center and transferred to a prison for adults after he turned 21. Number 4. Russell Burrell A Superior Court judge sentenced a 21-year-old city man to serve 20 years in prison after he admitted to his role in a botched robbery that led to the slaying of three people in July 2012. Quandell Husband of Douglas Avenue pleaded guilty to one count of attack with intent to commit robbery and one count of conspiracy to commit robbery for plotting with his childhood friend Russell Burrell and another friend, Donovan Hall, to rob a marijuana dealer of drugs and money July 30, 2012. During the robbery attempt, Burrell shot to his disposal Damien Colon, Shamika Barris, and Michael Martin of the Arbor Glen housing complex on General Street, while three children slept just rooms away. Husband, who had just turned 16 at the time of the murders, was indicted as an adult in the shooting incident. A jury convicted him of all three counts after a trial in 2014. Superior Court Judge Robert D. Krauss sentenced him to serve two consecutive life sentences plus 10 years behind bars. On the evening of July 30, 2012, Quandell Husband did not have a gun, did not fire the gun, and did not, and did not kill anyone. Russell Burrell did. After the robbery and crimes and in the furtherance of the conspiracy, Quandell Husband took the gun from Russell Burrell and hid it. Assistant Attorney General James Baum told Judge Nettie C. Vogel during the hearing on Husband's plea, according to a draft of Baum's statement provided to the state. Husband was the only one of the four people charged, three who were teenagers at the time of the gruesome happening, to go to trial. Burrell, now 22, the admitted trigger man who wielded the 9mm Glock with a red laser sight, pleaded guilty to taking the lives of Martin, Colin, and Barris. Burrell gave very reluctant testimony at Husband's trial. Krauss sentenced Burrell to four consecutive life sentences plus 10 years in prison for being what a judge called a cold-blooded, pitiless slayer. Burrell, who has two children with Husband's half-sister, refused to implicate Husband in testimony at trial. Number 3. Austin Myers A Clayton man who was sentenced to the gallows by a Warren County jury for the 2014 fatal kniving of a childhood friend filed a motion with the Ohio Supreme Court to delay the execution pending resolution of his state appeals. Attorneys for Austin Myers, now 26, filed the motion seeking an order to stay the execution of his ending penalty sentence, which the Ohio Supreme Court set for July 20, 2022. 
That stay of execution was granted until his direct appeal was denied. He was the youngest person on the row when he entered the prison system. Myers was convicted in October 2014 for the knifing Justin back at his home near Waynesville. The slaying happened during a robbery. Another Clayton man, Timothy Mosley, actually took Back's life, but investigators said Myers instigated the crime. Myers and Mosley were both 19 years old then. Trial testimony showed that Myers planned the crime, although Mosley ultimately fatally knived Back during a struggle with Mosley and Myers on the floor of the kitchen after a garret designed to choke Back caught on his chin. Myers was sentenced to the gallows. In his latest appeal of that sentence, he will be able to present evidence that wasn't used in previous appeals related to his mental health, according to a March 2021 court ruling. Number 2. Cameron Heron A state appeals court has upheld Cameron Heron's 24-year prison sentence for his role in causing a 2018 traffic crash on Bayshore Boulevard that took the lives of a mother and her young daughter. After hearing oral arguments in the case earlier, a three-judge panel of the 2nd District Court of Appeal affirmed the trial court's sentencing decision. It is obviously very disappointing, but appeals such as this are always a steep uphill climb, said Heron's attorney, John Fitzgibbons. We are currently evaluating the options which we have. Heron's appeal had raised the issue of whether Circuit Judge Christopher Nash misused his discretion in applying the sentence. The appeal noted the difference between Heron's penalty and that of the other involved teen driver, John Barano, who negotiated an agreement for a six-year sentence. The crash occurred May 23, 2018, along the iconic boulevard. Witnesses said the pair appeared to be racing as they sped north on Bayshore, Barano in a Nissan Altima, Heron in a Ford Mustang that he'd received as a gift for his recent high school graduation. Jessica Reisinger Robinault, who was from Ohio and visiting relatives in Tampa, had gone out for a walk that morning, pushing her 21-month-old daughter, Lilia, in a stroller. She moved across the roadway near Knights Avenue. At the same moment, the cars approached. She and her daughter were struck by the Mustang and lost their lives. After a day-long sentencing hearing, which featured emotional testimony from family members of the victims, Nash imposed 24 years, 9 years for the mother, 15 years for the child. Number 1. John R. Freeman John R. Freeman Jr. was denounced by Isabella M. Tennant's father as a disgusting animal as Freeman was sentenced to 22 years to life in prison for taking the life of the 5-year-old girl in her great-grandparents' Niagara Falls home. Niagara County Judge Matthew J. Murphy III imposed the sentence, which was the most severe he could order under the terms of a July 3rd plea bargain. It was slightly less than the legal maximum of 25 years to life for second degree, to which Freeman had pleaded guilty in the August 26, 2012 passing of the Cheektowaga girl. Freeman was repentant in court. I'm so sorry for all the family, he said, choking back sobs as he turned toward the girl's relatives. I'm just sorry, I can't say anything else. Deputy District Attorney Holly E. Sloma made it clear she hopes Freeman is never paroled. She told Murphy that when he was questioned by Niagara Falls police, Freeman was calm, cool, and collected, pleasant as he could be with the detectives. He spoke in cold detail of how he took the life of, with his bare hands, a defenseless five-year-old girl. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.